actually have set up here in the studio. We have a, a radio that's playing pink noise into a IQ 500.4 amplifier. Uh, I've gone in and tweak and I've done some really exaggerated equalization on the curve and then we're coming out of the amplifier into the yeah. key lock. So we actually used the 502 when we were when we were doing our you beta did, testing for this. You were doing that? Yeah, we had a 502 uh, Q class and so when we got our prototype for Joe to test, or Joe sent us a prototype. Right. Um, we were using it. I go, oh, what am I, oh, I got a 502. Use a, use a 502. Messed it all up and just like, I think we did a live show on that at one point on like Instagram. You may have done yeah. that. I mean, what are the odds? Exactly. So, so Ernie, let's do it. If, if you will do a, I'm going to bring up my laptop as an asset. Will you put us in picture in picture? I'll give Ernie a second here to make this happen. So, what I've got is. There we go. Good. Perfect. Awesome. There, you got it. I just want to make sure we were there. Got it. Okay, so what I'm playing right now, this is the pink noise coming out of the radio into the, key, into the, the tweak or the IQ amplifier. It's been adjusted with tweak, and now we're looking at the right channel. As you can see here, I've done a, a big pull out here right about 40 hertz. I did some big boost about 2, 250. I did another pull out here about 2K, and then I did a big boost about 10K. So this is the right channel exaggerated. And then I'm going to go over here and show you the same thing on the left channel. What I did is I just basically did the exact opposite. So I boosted at the 40 hertz. I did a cut at the 200, 250. I did a boost at 2K, and then I did a cut at 10K. So these are some, like, this is not a curve you want to use in any system. I mean, that one's better than the other one, but, yeah, they both suck. They both, they both suck. They're both horrible. So to show you what's going to happen, for instance, like, we'll go back here to this right channel, and I'll show them both to you after the fact. I've already run the key lock through its setup routine. So what you're watching here right now is the bypassed. The key is not doing anything. This is the signal just coming into it. And watch what happens if I turn the key on, just hit the button. Magic. And magically, I'll let it stabilize here for a second. You can see that that big uh, cut that was at 40 hertz is gone. That big boost at 200, 250 is gone. We're back to a pink noise flat line on the right channel. And then on the left channel, which was obviously just as bad, you're seeing the exact same thing. If I turn the key off, you'll see it'll go right back to that funky curve that was coming in. And so, Ernie, go ahead and uh, bring us back. I'm going to go back to here. Thank you, sir. So, Ooh, since, <laughs> Ooh, so since Dean talked about that on his drive to Stillwater, I thought it'd be appropriate to kind of show that live here in the studio. And what can happen is if you've got a factory radio, my first time, love it, can't believe the kind I've been missing out. Hey, Jeff, thanks for tuning in, man. Uh, appreciate you joining the show. Throw us into your nightly Tuesday uh, things that you like to do. We go well with a cold beverage. Um, the, uh, seriously, we do. The thing that I wanted to show with that is that, like what Dean was talking about, is there's some equalization base roll off. Uh, can be volume dependent, some of it can be not be volume dependent, and then as you turn through it, it becomes volume dependent, but they're messing around with that EQ coming Loudness. out of that factory radio. Yeah. And so what the key lock is gonna do for you is basically you're gonna turn your factory radio, you're gonna set all your controls flat, you're gonna turn that factory radio up to the three quarter clean output volume range, and then you're gonna let the key do its thing, and when it does, you're gonna end up with all that base that the factory DSP has tweaked with and get you back to a perfectly flat output in that 20 to 20, now you can feed that into any amplifier you want. Understand when you do the key 500.1, this amplifier does that same thing, it just does it on the bass frequencies. It doesn't do it full range like the key lock does. So one of the, one of the biggest like, oh my God, why do they come with the 500 watt amp conversations we had? Because when they came, you know, when it first came out, it was like, why do they only do, where's, where's my thousand, where's my 1500, where's my 3K, right. where's my 2400.1? And I'm like, um, do you have a 3K? Do you have these amplifiers? Yeah, it's right here. All right, well, let me introduce you to the key lock. The key lock will do exactly what that needs to do, but it allows you to turn any sub amp into a key amplifier. Correct. So